what I just I offered uh, Christian to to do a small presentation I did earlier. It's a small abstract. Uh, it's or a small piece. It's all about uh, uh, looking towards what we do in data modeling, right? Uh, I see a lot of generalization abstraction going on, and uh, I'm not a fan, as you probably know, about uh, abstraction generalization. I'm happy to to see on change presentation with the bubble of his right and uh, his canvas. It's all about the terminology be really being used in the organization. So we need to find a way to stay away from uh, abstraction generalization. Also, why should we stay away from it? Uh, so abstraction, right? Uh, it's more technique to say, hey, this is an essential aspect uh, of the entity and we are going to ignore or hide all the stuff we think is less important or non-essential. But the thing is that although it, it's very easy to just say, hey, let's let's focus on what is really important, what's all going on. Uh, the question is really, what do we think is essential? Yes, and what is not essential? And uh, I have an example about uh, how people are using abstraction in data modeling. And where it really does not make sense, especially not when you want to go to uh, what we call the ensemble logical model. Uh, so, uh, which is a perfect fit for anchor modeling, but also for data vault modeling and all the other fun stuff. The example, by the way, will be more or less the same what I'm doing on my presentation about relationships on, uh, uh, on Friday. But of course, it's a whole other, uh, the example is the same, but we are going to do a little bit different. So the example is a couple of years ago, uh, I had an appointment in the hospital and uh, go to a doctor and I've been diagnosed with a groin rupture. I wouldn't recommend anybody, by the way, to get a groin rupture, it's no fun, uh, but I've been diagnosed with groin rupture. Uh, in reality, by the way, it was two times uh, within a couple of months of each other. Also a very bad idea. So if I'm looking at the small business case, Remco, appointment, hospital, doctor, uh, diagnosis, groin rupture, this is what it's all about. People knowing me know that I want to say, hey, uh, we need to know what's important over here and we need to kind of uh, categorize it. So we are using categorization, uh, although some people think that categorization stands for the actual abstraction level you want to do. So we could say Remco, that's a person, appointment, that's my event, hospital is the place, doctor is a person, diagnosis is a thing, groin rupture is a thing. Uh, cool, let's model. And then we come up with a model, say, hey, there's an event which is related to a place, there's an event related to a person, event related to a person, and event related to a thing. If I would abstract it to the level of event, play, thing, person, so on a higher level. And of course, what does it tell me the model? Well, hmm, it should say something about Remco going into a hospital, having the appointment with a doctor and being diagnosed with groin rupture. But does it really tell me that is what's going on? You know what, let's continue. That's another example. Remco hospitalized into a bed, into a hospital room by a nurse or a ward or whatever we're going to tell them. So Remco hospitalized bed, hospital room, nurse. And again, categorize them, uh, uh, person, event, thing, place, person. And the model come back with, hey, there's an event and related to a place, event related to a person, event related to a thing, but again, what is this model telling me? And and also, how is this model different than the model we had before? And then people tell me, yeah, but you know, Remco, event, place, thing, person, you need to do a little bit more. And that's what we actually do when we are going to uh, uh, to model on an abstract or generalized level. We go to add stuff like types and roles. So we're going to make it Better of a meta model, right? You know what? I have an event and I have certain type of events. I have certain things which are I have a type. Uh, the place have a type and the person has a role and the relationship between the person and the event is a role. How do I know what I have? 
Well, Remco, you know, that's very, very simple. You know what we can do? We can look what type of events are there. Oh, I see that there is an event uh, hospitalized, there is an event appointment, so two different kinds of events. What kind of place do I have? Well, I have hospital, I have hospital room as a place because that's what the type is telling me. Uh, a person can be a nurse or ward, a doctor, uh, uh, could be Remco. Uh, so all different kinds of roles and they're related to an event. But again, this really doesn't make it more clear. And I think that was something what uh, uh, I think most of us are striving to. And uh, uh, again, what Shane was presenting in his canvases, uh, you really want to do is say, hey, I want to go into a discussion with business people. I want to be in a room with business people and have their opinion, have their information, uh, capture what they think is interesting and have that related to a model. Because in my opinion, a model is always uh, not only the place where we put data in, but it's also, you know, it's a discussion moment in time, right? It's the place where we can say, hey, dear business, we were talking about what you're doing in your organization. We created a model together, very important. And does it seem right to you? And if I come up with a model like this, with event type place, type roles, etc., then people say, what are you talking about, Remco? We didn't discuss about events and places and things and persons, uh, let alone all different types. I said, yeah, you know what? Wait, I'll query the data and see what kind of types and roles I have. And that's not working. And remember, we tried it and I heard, uh, sorry, I lost your name, saying data vault modeling is hard, but data vault modeling isn't hard if you make it very, very simple. And I think you should make it simple. Let's go back to my example to see how I think we should capture this and get this one going. Remco appointment, hospital, doctor, groin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in a room with a whole bunch of people doing a workshop. And I got that idea from uh, originally from Lawrence Cora with his uh, B methodology, he's called it model storming. Shane was referring to him as well. And I was thinking, you know, this is a good idea. I have something over here. And I needed to change Beam so much that we came up with our own, our own stuff. It's now the Elm approach, and we have a bunch of templates to them. But the first thing is, is what I'm going to do when I'm in a room with people from the organization. Say, you know what? I'm just going to write down what you apparently telling me. I have a bunch of what we call Corbis concepts, something which is important for you as an organization. Remco, appointment, hospital, doctor, diagnosis, groin rupture. And when they come up with the next sentence, with the next use case, well, Remco hospitalized into a bed in the hospital room by a nurse, I'm going to extend with hospitalized bed, hospital room nurse. This is my first step in data modeling together with people from the organization. It doesn't feel like they are doing data modeling. People from the business, I never experienced people from the business saying, hey, this is scary, I can't do this because this is really what they are doing. They are telling me what they are. And then we go for a next step because of course this doesn't say anything to me yet. I need to understand what are we talking about? What is Remco? What is an appointment? What is a hospital? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my categories. I'm going to say, hey, I have five buckets. Sometimes I have six buckets, five buckets. And each of the business concepts I mentioned before, I'm going to add into a bucket. It's either an event or a person or a place or a thing or something else. And then we found out, I'm going to ask, Again, asking people in the organization, what is Remco? Is it an event, a person, a place, a thing, or not a concept? And they will probably tell me, yeah, you know what? Remco is really not so much of an event, a person, a place, a thing, or not a concept. It's actually an instance of a patient. So I need to add patient over here. Cool. Uh, appointment, well, that's apparently that really is an event, something happening over there, hospital, it's a place, doctor, it's a person, uh, the diagnosis, well, let's call it a thing. I know you can be diagnosed, but that's another thing with diagnosis, a thing. Groin rupture, well, 
growing rupture is, in fact, one of the possible diagnoses you can get in the hospital. Hospitalized, it's an event, right? There's something happening. A bad, hmm. We got a lot of discussion about what a bad was. Come to that later on. Hospital room, a place, nurse. Yeah, it's a patient. Uh, it's an event of a person, sorry. And then we get patient, right? Uh, going to edit over here. Oops, don't shoot out of the way. Line go wrong. A patient is also a person. So this is finally what my mod, what, what I'm going to have as input for my model. And remember, I'm not going to model, hey, I have an event, a person, a place, a thing, or some other concept. I'm going to model appointment, hospital, doctor, diagnosis, hospital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I need to know in what kind of bucket everything is falling. And especially on the events. Uh, again, it's kind of making a... Uh, Heads up for Friday. Events are very important. Without an event, nothing is happening, right? If there's no event, if there's no sale, if there's no uh, appointment, if there's no hospitalization, nothing really happening, nothing's coming together. So we need to know what the events are to make sure that we know what's going on. Having a whole bunch of persons means that you probably have to do something with a call center or something with a lot of people involved being in, on appointments or whatever, that, or calls, that kind of stuff. Having a lot of places, more logistics, having other things, more production area, combination, it could be anything. Interestingly enough, this way of working, and again, uh, having it visual, having this, this, this open for everybody to, to understand, to say, yeah, but wait a minute, what is a bad? And there was a discussion when I was, because this is a real life example. There was a discussion, what is it bad? Is it the actual uh, physical bad over here? Physical bad? And someone said, yeah, you know what? The bad actually is not so much the physical bad because the bad is more like a place in the hospital room where a patient could be lied on. And it's very important to have this information on the back. But this stuff on the back, we could add monitors to it. We have oxygen. So the bed is actually not a, phys a physical thing, but it, what we call a bed is the place in the hospital. And some people said, yeah, you know, it's even worse or better because there also need to be staff available because why do we need to have that uh, uh, staff available? Or why do we need to have to know the bed is? We also need to calculate availability. Uh, how, how how much of our beds are still available. So we need to know if there are staff available to take care of the patient on the bed. And to make it even more fun, uh, they also had a room, uh, a place on the hallway. So in the hallway, there were also places where you could put a bed with oxygen and monitors and staff available. And the cool thing was, this wasn't part of the calculation of available rooms, uh, uh, places, yes or no. But basically, what we came up with, yeah, that's with staff available, is more something for my KPI. I need to know that one, of course. But for my model, I need to know first, okay, is it the physical bed? Because for maintenance, they want to have the physical bed, or is it just a place in the hospital? So I extend it to say, okay, what we call a bed, the best fit is the place. If we have the physical bed, I'm calling it a physical bed. And I think that's one of the most important things. Uh, uh, I think it was one of the questions listening before, right? Is if you have a name for something, uh, it could be that one part of the organization is calling it different than the other one for the same thing. Or worse, we are both calling it the same thing. We're both calling it a bed. But if I'm from the maintenance department, my bed is actually a physical bed that has wheels, it has a, uh, a bedding, if you put, put a mattress on top of that one. If I'm from planning perspective from uh, uh, how many patients can I add in the hospital, a bed for me is the place where I can store, place a physical bed and put a patient on and I can monitor the attached to it, et cetera, et cetera. But a bed in their situation couldn't even per se need to have a physical bed. So that discussion is very important to have and also to understand. So 
what are we talking about and try to make it as clear as we can. So in the end, when I come up with this information and we put in the event, person, place, we categorize everything, I could easily create a very simple logical model to say, hey, I have appointments and there are, we have diagnosis on the appointment. I have doctors, I have a patient, hospital, and they all are related to my appointment event. And uh, hey, I have my hospitalized event. So this is my event, this is my event. And that hospitalized event, I need to have a patient. There need to be a room. There need to be a bed, which has to be a physical bed. and there need to be a nurse together. If I'm going to show this model to people in the organization, in this case, of course, healthcare, people understand what I'm talking about. People understand that I'm talking about, hey, apparently in an organization, we do have something we call appointment where a doctor is diagnosing a patient. And when the patient has to be hospitalized, we need to have a bed, there need to be a nurse, need to be a room available. This makes, at least in my opinion, and luckily for me, my most of my customers as well, think this is a very simple way to communicate. Everybody's everything is clear for me, and I know what I have in the end. And I need to do a couple of steps, of course, to uh, to get to my data vault model, but it's almost as clear as I'm going to get because all the blue parts, well, it wouldn't be surprise you in data vault, they're going to be all our you know, now I have a core business concept, so all going to be my hubs. I have to add some links, I have to add some satellites, and I'm kind of done making my life easy. This is a model which I think is easy to communicate. It's clear what is what, uh, it's clear to go further. Basically, uh, you have to ask business people to tell what's essential for them, what are your core business concepts. If I have a system or an organization where there's a whole bunch of going on and I'm going to ask, where is my customer? Nobody in the organization are going to say, oh, let me look into a CRM system, what my customer is. They are able from a business perspective to tell you, hey, the customer is the person coming into our organization, uh, which probably is going to buy some services or goods or uh, have an appointment or whatever from us, right? That is our customer. Uh, all the other things, where it's being stored or whatever it's uh, it's been made up, it's next by, next step. It's the end when we do the physical implementation. We need to know, hey, where's my customer from which physical implementation, what databases, what source systems is my customer coming from? Is it the one CRM or do we have 26 CRM systems? Do we have also a sales system which we're having customer? To be honest, for nobody in the organization, from an organizational perspective, nobody cares. They just say, hey, give me my customer. And we can provide the customer, we can model the customer. How do we do it? Well, we use the Elm approach. Uh, uh, same as uh, Shane, uh, templates freely available if you go to uh, elmstandard.com. Website will be provided, no problem. And we are using we think a very structured guided method methodology to go to there. It's always business driven, uh, open source driven. I think the most important thing is walk the path together. That's what I'm calling it, right? Business people in IT where business is in control. IT is really there to guide and to, to, uh, to make sure that we have all the essential we need to do in the end to create our data models and to create our data warehouse and create our reporting. Uh, we need to be simple. We need to make it clear. Uh, document while we move forward. Yes, sure. Uh, agile and flexible and uh, just capture everything. Also, be very, very aware to make the sweet balance between abstraction, generalization, and specification. We need to, it's not always clear what way you need to be. The only thing what we I can say is, as soon as you start to need typing or role playing something, you're probably going to be too much abstracted or generalization and it's not helping your organization. It's not helping the business people. As soon as you need to type down or query or whatever to see what it is, you are way too much abstracted or you may too generalized. 
uh, it's not understandable enough for the business. Our templates we have, again, they are freely available. I'm very happy with the guys from, uh, from Ellie. Uh, basically what Ellie has in their business glossary part, it is really the same kind of way of thinking what we were uh, uh, providing in our templates. Uh, so if you don't want to use Excel templates or uh, whatever, but you want to use a proper tool, by the way, do uh, uh, use a proper tool. Uh, certainly check out what the LA guys are doing. I know that there's a, a very strong connection between Ellie and Dataville Builder. Uh, we can model an LE and uh, use our Elm approach into uh, that tool and go into Dataville Builder. It's all working together. I know that Shane, uh, although I know you're a very big fan of Beam, uh, also looked into the Elm approach and kind of think uh, uh, I can use the best of both worlds for my own uh, purpose and my own agile uh, data IO uh, tooling. Uh, from my perspective, it all makes sense. 